you know, we, we got in the snake bite channel, but as soon as you get out of the channel now, you've got a um, troll, troll or pole. The issue is, hey, some days you get up in the middle of snake bite and they're not there. And if you're in water that's too shallow for the sharks and there are no redfish, you're looking at empty water for four hours. Let's see, one, two, bunch of them. Literally, there were redfish all over the place. Schools, singles, everything. Got him. There you go. How about that? Yes, look at that guy. That is a that shark. Is the biggest fish I've ever caught. Woo! I thought you said you had to okay, relax. Oh, dude, he just ripped my boat off. Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. Yeah, man. Sitting up here in one of my favorite spots. A lot of things have changed since I've been up here last, but I'm looking forward to trying to get up in here and, and uh, look for these tailing redfish. Should, should be good, man, with the, uh, you know, they started that um, pole and troll zone, so. This whole giant area snake bike now, we've got to either use the trolling motor or a push pull once you get out of the channel. So um, I think it's going to be better because I don't think the fish are going to be pressured as much. A lot of the guys aren't pulling in there now, and so I'm thinking these fish are going to be very happy and unpressured, and if we find them, they'll probably eat. Well, there's no question that, that the, uh, the use is down. I mean, usually I would come up in here and see you know, 20 boats on, on a tide like this, and they'd be all over. We used to be able to run all the way up in there, and mm -hmm. things have changed. Things always change. It, it'll change the fishing, it'll change the way that people fish. But, you know, I'm sure that, that the fishing's good. We also had that cold front. It was very severe this year. A lot of people talk about that, and I haven't fished up here since that cold front, so looking forward to seeing I'm gonna push, I'm gonna go ahead and get us out. up in here and then we'll troll the motor in a ways and uh, it's gonna be a long, um, you know, it's gonna be a commitment, but, and I don't know if the fish are in there, but we'll, we'll find out. That's what we do. Let's find out. They had made that no motor zone, that pole and troll zone, I guess it's been about a year now, and, you know, I have heard very few people going in there because they, they closed so much of the area to easy access. You can't just blaze in there with your big motor anymore. Um, so it's such a commitment that I was so curious to get in there and, and you know, knowing that you and I aren't scared to pull in and pull out or, or use the trolling motor to get us close and, and man, was that an experience. Yeah, you know, whether it's hunting or fishing, if I'm gonna go someplace and like a backpacking trip, I don't mind physical exertion, physical effort to get somewhere as long as I'm pretty sure it's gonna be worth it and even if the fishing's not good, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna see anybody in there. So that's cool for me. This was the first time to go up in there, and I know it was the first time for you to be fishing in there. That was pretty interesting. You know, we, we got in the snake bite channel, but as soon as you get out of the channel now, you've got a um, troll, troll or pole. Right. So we, uh, we trolling motored a long ways, and that's the beauty of that little skiff having that, you know, what was it, an 82 pound thrust trolling motor. Uh, incredible power. We were able to, uh, you know, quickly and efficiently move across very shallow water without touching the bottom at all with the trolling motor. I mean, the water was probably two, two feet or more. It was actually too deep for the redfish. And we could see the slick water up ahead of us. And we knew once we got to that slick water, that's going to be the shallower stuff. That's probably going to be where the reds are well, pushing. Not only did we think that that's where the reds were going to be, we start looking with the binoculars and actually see them up there. Got him. Yeah, Good baby, job. how about that? Woo. That was a great cast. First cast of the day. That Could've was cool. Could've won a casting competition without cast. <laughs> that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Saw that wake pushing away. It's awesome. I like it when you do that because now it's your turn to pole. <laughs> now I've only taken a couple of swipes on the pole. Now talk about being aggressive. Hit him right in the head and he chowed it. I thought he would've spooked. You did hit him right in the head. <laughs> But I think that's because of the, 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 the lack of pressure. Yep. That's a good sized fish, too. Nice Yeah, one. that's Look a nice size. fish, man. You can win some money with that one. That was cool, man. 
I thought he was blown out. He was pushing away. He felt us coming, but uh, he pushed twice, actually. Pushed away, kind of slowed down, pushed away again, and bonk. Well, that tells you, though, that lack of uh, pressure. That's a nice fish. Look at that. I get him. That is a nice fish, man. How about that? We haven't been uh, back up here in a long time and pull in and catch a fish like that. That's pretty nice. Man, you could definitely win money with him. <laughs> That's a fat fish. Oh, nice. <laughs> Look at that guy. That is a nice fish. Really nice fish. Long and skinny. I'll tell you what, that's a good sign. Let me help with this hook. First fish we, we saw we threw out and he just munched it. Got him! Yes! There you go. Man, he chased that he thing that. down. That guy was aggressive. Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin. Only in a Yellowfin. By Mercury. By Hawks K, the only key you'll need. And by Motor Guide. Costa Sunglasses. And Power Pole. When we talk about, you know, the fact that that this place has changed from, uh, you know, free for all Wild West event over there to uh, now a highly monitored pole and troll only zone. You know, it's not that people aren't using it as much because they don't, you know, they're afraid of the physical effort of polling. I mean, there's lots of guides that can pole all day long. That's not the issue. The issue is, you know, if, it, if it's an experienced guide, he knows that, hey, some days you get up in the middle of snake bite and they're not there. And what are you gonna do then? Because if the redfish aren't there, it's too shallow for the sharks. You're looking at empty water for four hours while, while your customer eats a sandwich, you know, and once the food's all gone, then what are you gonna do? <laughs> but you might get up in there and wish that you were somewhere else. Uh, even for us, that's what it was. It was a bit of a gamble. We didn't know for sure that they were gonna be in there and we knew it was gonna be a commitment. But that's the nice thing about, you know, where's no pressure. If we catch right. them, we catch them. If we don't, we don't. Hey, yeah, and we both know the drill. We both understand, hey, there could be fish here. It could be great. There could be nothing here, and it could be awful. So we go up in there. Luckily for us, fishing was great. And I don't know how it couldn't be because nobody's been fishing up there in a year. I mean, I was really astounded at the lack of pressure. And, you know, between the last time I was there when it was Wild West free for all and now this time. I'm not saying one's better than the other, it's just different. Yeah, we're like, see where I'm looking? We got them flagging like, I can't believe right where I'm looking. Yeah, I got multiple flaggers. Yeah, I got at least, you can see where that rip is up in there. They're just this side of the rip. Um, one, two, three. I got at least three flagging in there, Tom. Good. You catch one and I'll catch the other two. And that giant shark, see that big old shark? He's up as shallow as he can get and those redfish are all inside of him. I think the closest one's right where I'm looking I think looking there's at. a redfish behind the shark. See that push behind the yeah, shark? Yeah, that's a big fish. Maybe that's a two. red, it's huge. You know, we were still in a little bit deeper water where they weren't, you know, tailing depth, but, uh, but as you're pushing us in there, you gave me the bow some more, and, and uh, you know, I was just casting every wake. I think, you know, the second wake I hit in front of them, and that one spooked, you know, so they weren't all dumb. But, uh, you know, as I, as I started to make those good casts in front of the wakes, throw it out ahead of them, surf it into them, and then just twitch, twitch, and boom! Come on. Got him! Yes! There you go. How about that? Man, he chased that he thing that. down. Man, look how red his fins are. Yeah. That guy was aggressive. That was cool, man. We're just getting up in there, too. I can see him tailing. Awesome. <laughs> I love fishing for these tailing redfish. Oh, my. That's so cool, man. Have it all to ourselves with yeah, That's what I like. All to ourselves. On a, and on a perfect, calm day like this. OK. And he blends with the grass so perfectly. I was using a 8 to 17 pound, 7 and a half foot rod, Boca 40 reel, and then I had the um, 10 pound braid. So that 10 pound braid, I could cast that a long way, especially with those, those big shrimp. Rig wheatless worm hook, 
no weight, but still had enough, you know, it should say adding no lead to it, but just the weight of the, the bait itself, mm -hmm. I could really cast it a long ways, but yet it didn't sink fast. So it was, you know, like neutrally buoyant. It could surf it on the surface in front of the fish, and then when, when I got in front of them, I could let it s settle, just a little twitch, twitch, and, the, and they'd eat it. Very nice, beautiful. Look at that, really blue really on his tail. Orangish red back fins. He's lit up. Lots of blue. Look how perfectly he matches the grass. Whoa. He was ready to go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You know, several years ago, I learned about the virtues of the trolling motor, and at first, it just made my life easier by, you know, giving me a break. I didn't have to push the boat down the flat all day. I could use the trolling motor a little bit. But then, I learned about how I could fish a bigger boat in shallow water, like my 24-foot bay boat. With a trolling motor, I was able to fish for the same fish, but I could carry more bait, more tackle, more people. I had more gas and therefore more range. It changed everything. Then I learned about situations both inshore and offshore that I couldn't even be successful without a high quality, high powered trolling motor. Now when I become so reliant on a piece of gear, it makes me look for the best possible thing on the market. Now what I'm looking for in a trolling motor is a motor that's gonna be very corrosion resistant. I also want it to be very durable and I want it to give me the longest battery life possible. Now Motor Guide has all these features and more. It has a great paint process that's gonna keep the motor safe in salt water. It also is incredibly well sealed. I've never had a problem with a lower unit. The motor is very durable and a lot of the digital technology in a motor guide trolling motor will allow you to get three times the battery life over other five speed motors. So I have trolling motors on all of our boats now, the skiff and the 24 foot bay boat. I wouldn't fish a day without the trolling motor. I don't use it every single situation, but I do use it every single day. I'm looking for the best trolling motor I can. I choose a motor guide. I think you ought to go down to Bass Pro, check out the motor guide display, ask some questions. Take it out and see if you don't open up entire new worlds of fishing just like I did. Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Lowrance and the all-new HDS Gen 2 Fish Finder Chart Plotter. Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. And by King Sailfish Mounts. Marine Formula Stable, and Scott Fly Rods. As of January of 2011, um, Everglades National Park implemented its first pole and troll zone in Snakebite, which is just outside of Flamingo. Um, and they did this for a few reasons. Um, one of them is to uh, help enhance the protections of the sensitive aquatic uh, resources there as, and also the wilderness resources that are found in, in, throughout Florida Bay. Um, it's to enhance um, wildlife viewing opportunities, enhance flats fishing, and in addition we want to help expand um, education as far as um, shallow water boating techniques. We did a um, seagrass scarring study. Um, where we did look at aerial photos of the bay and looked at the seagrass damage that was occurring. Um, seagrass damage that was caused by boat propellers um, and boats running aground in Florida Bay. Through that study, they determined that there were 12,000 individual seagrass scars in Florida Bay, adding up to approximately 325 miles worth of scarring. Those scars take, can take years, if not decades, to heal. So they wanted to come up with a way to see if we could minimize that seagrass scarring damage because the seagrass is so important um, as a nursery habitat for a lot of animals, a lot of fish, a lot of crustaceans, and those sorts of things. We want to protect that habitat. And so that's, that's how we came up with the idea of the pole and troll zone for snake bite. You can enter uh, snake bite um, via tin can channel and by snake bite channel on plane um, into snake bite. Uh, and you can also um, use the Jimmy's Lake area as an idle speed zone. Um, if you're any other place in snake bite, uh, you'll need to use a push pole 
paddles, or a trolling motor. You know, if you got it in front of those fish, they were, they have not been pressured. They're not, they're, they're, they're really, they're dumb. You know, they're the way that you want to see them. They're, they're like fish that haven't been fished for. And, you know, I think if you leave a fish alone for a week, he's dumb. But these fish have been left alone for the most part for a year. Certainly a, a one one hundredth of the pressure that they were getting before. Well, look and, at that day. Uh, I mean, we were there all day long. We didn't see one other boat fishing in snake bite. Mm -hmm. We looked around. We could see them on the fringes of the channels. But, I mean, in that whatever five by five mile area, we were looking around all day long and could not see another boat. That's yeah. something that I don't think you or I have ever seen before. That's right, and redfish everywhere. I mean, just literally, there were redfish all over the place and just tailing, waking, pushing, school, singles, just everything. He's falling it. He's falling it. He ate it. Yeah! That was awesome. Good job. That was awesome. This is some good fishing, man. This is great. It's been way too long since I've done this. <laughs> I'll get him. De decent sized fish, too. This guy's got a couple spots on him. One spot on one side, yeah, two, on two the spots other. on the other. Huh. Funny how they have yeah. different, yeah, different looks. I've seen some of them with like. That's what we're spots. seeing when they're going through the water like that. They get excited. That dorsal will pop up like that. And that's how a lot of times you can tell if they eat, they eat your bait. Just boom, uh -huh. that sticks up, and they they eat. That's what they do when they get excited, you know. And what we're seeing is just that fish. You know, well, flagging like that. He didn't want to. He didn't want to play, but <laughs> you know, I always like to do that and hold him down there and see, you know, kind of how big the fish would have to be to stick his whole tail out of the water, so you kind of have an idea what you're, what you're looking at. Maybe it makes your knees a little weaker. <laughs> There's a lot of fish. There he goes away right there. Let's see. Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Quantum Rods and Reels, fishing at a quantum level. By the Florida Keys in Key West, come as you are. And by Corrosion Block, Gamakatsu, and Loadmaster Boat Trailers. Want to be on our show? Check out our Facebook page and find out details on how you can be a guest star on Saltwater Experience. Let's see, one, two, bunch of them. Moving slow and just every now and then their tips Three. are popping up. I think there's four or five fish in there. I think even more. It was a lot of fun watching so many different redfish in such a short period of time, no boats around as far as we could see. Have, you know, that's just a neat feeling to, to know that w we took a chance, we went into an area we hadn't been in a long time, didn't know if the fish were gonna be there, and you know, knew it was gonna be a commitment, and, the, and have a payoff like that with just no boats around, and fish every which direction of all different sizes, and having them happy and biting, and just an awesome day. See that in front of turned right to you. came out and stuck his head there out. There he is, get a double. Yeah, man. Get a double. They're coming right at us. Keep your rod down. There's a whole bunch of them. That was awesome. You see that school coming from a ways away. That was awesome. Good stuff. That was short. good stuff. Still and that up. guy, he came over there so hard. There's still some right here. Stuck his head out of the water. I got him. That was cool. As soon as that bait got in range, 
There's three or four of them. Look at that. There's a whole bunch of them still. A whole bunch of them. You're going to get another one. Got him. Oh, came on. Still got him in range. Still got him. Keep, stay down. Oh. I think there's some smaller ones. What happened? There. Took my took my shrimp, I think. Need a bait? Yeah. bunch of fish that wasn't four or five was it well there were so many that stuck around at the end i think there were some some, some larger ones and some small ones well, they're still right there we're gonna get another shot at him. let him go we'll go get it, these other guys there's two schools he broke up into two schools that's been settled just a little bit we're gonna get another shot at him right now.